do the recording. Well, 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 now it came. <clears throat> so good morning everyone, hope you guys doing good. Let me just start the presentation now. Minute, one moment. Okay. Okie dokie. So if you guys remember previously we talked about the we talked about the morphology, yeah, how morphology uh, influences the style, influences especially the poetic style, or it can also um, influence the readers of fiction, etc. So this is actually the interest. The, the topic actually was interesting for me, first, even though it wasn't that long, it wasn't that much informative. It was quite um, lovely to work with that very one. However, today we are going to discuss um, the topic of syntaxis, or as we call it, syntax. Yeah. So guys, do you remember what is syntax about? What syntax is about? What is about grammar? Yeah, grammar. Anyone? About sentences? Syntax, structure sense? of the sentence? Anyone? Structure? Right, anyone who would like to um, would like to answer orally? Because <laughs> I'm I'm not used to reading your answers, but I would like to hear your voices just to get some feedback from you. Well, let me ask some students. Yep. Look at it. Okay, Adema, what about you? How do you think what syntax is about? Adema Semitai, good morning. All right, seems like Adema is not here and she's not listening to the lecture. Well, okay, what about Timurlan Anwarbek? What do you think about it? Hello, Timurlan. Actual sentence. Pardon? I cannot uh, hear you, unfortunately. Structure of sentences. Structure of sentences. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Okay, guys, let me know if you hear me or not, or it is about the Midlands network. I hope it's not about my network. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Yes. yes. Right. Okie dokie. So, um, that is quite an interesting topic, actually. So we will in in this week we will. We can hear you. Can anybody hear me? Hello? Yes, yes no. 
Oh God, thanks God. It seems like some something wrong happened to my network because I could not hear your job. Okie dokie, so, <clears throat> so now this week we are going to have a look at the, at the topic of phrases, clauses, sentences. It's going to be all going to be about syntax. Uh, and we will have a look at the topics of coordination, subordination, and we will quickly discuss what is relative clause and poetic syntax. Actually, this is going to be interesting, in my honest opinion, because I'm, I'm a lot into syntax, even though syntax, the topic of syntax can be a bit challenging for some I don't know. I, I find I, I used to find it quite challenging uh, back at school, but I hope it is going to be fun and easy peasy for you guys because you are quite bright students, aren't you? Okay. So as we know, all the words they exist in some kind of a relationship, as we call them, structural relationships. And what is that relationship is? So this relationship means the phrases. So when the words are in relationships, they are built into phrases. For instance, we have noun phrase. So it's like Sarah or the enthusiastic lecture. Yeah, they are noun phrases. And we have verb phrases like she read or she reads or she has read. Yeah. These are the phrases. We have different types of phrases, noun phrases, verb phrases, ad adjective phrases, etc. etc. And if you have a look into the um into these examples, like example noun phrases, example as Sarah and enthusiastic lecture, we see that in the phrase Sarah. The phrase that is being that the word, the important word that is determining a phrase grammatical character, it is the phrase itself, Sarah, yeah, and it is being the head of it. It is the head. We call him head, yeah. And in the phrase, the enthusiastic lecturer, the word that is determining the phrase's grammatical character is the word lecturer yeah and the word lecturer is appeared as the head of the phrase galava yeah? whereas the other elements that are um added uh, added to the phrase as the enthusiastic they are called as dependents so in the phrase sarah there are no dependents Dependence, sorry. And in the phrase, the enthusiastic lecturer, lecturer is the head, but in that very time, it has dependence in the term of the deter determiner, the, the article, the, yeah, and the pre modifying adjective, enthusiastic. So, as we may see, we have head and dependence. So, head is the, the, most important word that determines the grammatical character of the uh, phrase yeah here so that is why it is it, the, these are the noun phrases because the heads in those um, phrases are the nouns lecturer and sarah they're both nouns and therefore the for example here in that very phrase the enthusiastic lecturer the whole phrase is considered as the noun phrase. That is the very interesting thing, isn't it? The same with the um, the it, with the following verb phrases: yeah, read and has read. So actually, read is the head um, in that very pose of the phrases, and has is the auxiliary verb. And just because it's an auxiliary verb, it, it is considered as the dependent. So, next thing uh, I would like to highlight is that the phrases always, they are built into clauses. 
and clauses are built into sentences. You may probably know what is clause, guys. So if you remember the basic grammar that you studied at school, according to the knowledge, what is the clause? What are the clauses? Let's say. Что такое um, clauses? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Nara. Thank you. If I'm not mistaken, uh, we have like clauses in like uh, compound or some uh, like this extra uh, sentences when we have two parts. Okay. Anyone else who may remember yep. what is clause? Thank you. Yep. If I'm not mistaken, clause is like of the words that contains a subject and a verb. Mm, absolutely. Yeah, so close, it is kind of a sentence, but the most important thing about the close and it is its uh, dif difference from uh, the phrase, yeah, uh, that close is the usually a part of the sentence and it usually contains a verb. So the most important uh, requirement for the phrase to be a close or <laughs> For the uh, a phrase to become a close is to contain a verb. That is uh, the like structural requirement for the close itself. Yeah. Okay, okay. So as we say here, words they are um, they are coming uh, coming together and they become phrases. Phrases are built into clauses then, and the clauses they are. Um, gathering together and become sentences in the very end. So let's have a look at the um, close Sarah read the book. Yeah. So Sarah here is the subject. As we you know, subject is, is the subject. I don't know how it is in Russian or it is in Kazakh. If I'm not mistaken, it is something like Bastawush, yeah, subject. And in Russian, it, it is... Um, Right, yeah. And the rest of the uh, clause here appears as the predicate. So we call them predicate. So what is a predicate? So predicate, it is the um, part of the part of the, let's say, clause, yeah. And it should contain at least a verb. So here, we have the verb and we have this uh, object actually, but in the uh, predicate itself is is the part of the clause or is the part of the sentence other than the subject. So subject itself is the noun that we know, yeah. But the predicate is the rest of the sentence or rest of the pardon uh, clause. Yeah. So please keep it in mind that there is a special work for the verb and object yeah, and the rest of the complementary words, complementary parts of the sentence, and they are all called predicate. If I'm not mistaken, it is something like, I don't, I don't remember the um, term, terminology for predicate and subject in Kazakh again, but I, if I'm not mistaken, there is something else apart from Bastawush or the subject. To be honest, I'm very bad at memorizing all the terminology. Yeah. So everything else, again, I'm, I'm going to repeat everything else apart from the subject is considered to be the predicate. So please keep it in mind. Yeah. Righty, righty. So what I would like to tell here is that verb phrase usually, verb phrase in the clauses is considered as the most important element in the clause structure. So why? Because usually verb phrases, they dictate what are the clausal elements or the complements are required to do. Yeah. Oh, here it is. So. Verb phrases, they are the most important elements. That is what, if I'm not mistaken, what we also been taught at the classes of 
Kazakh and Russian, yeah? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, again, I remember that our teacher told us that we are looking at the, well, first of all, when we are doing syntactic, syntactic analysis in the, um, in the classes of Kazakh, if I'm not mistaken, we had to find out the Bayandawush first rather than Bastawush. So first of all, we are looking at the verb because why? Because verb dictates what are the closer elements or what are the complements should do. Yeah? This is the most important thing. So the branch again, but Bastawush, Bastawush team is Bayandawush conference. It can Bayandawush, uh, right? Uh, all all so this is about it. So um, what is the complementation? Yeah, Co what are the complements? So complements, they are basic composition for uh, composition structures. They are all, all they are known as complementation patterns. So now we are going to look at the types of the complementation patterns. This is the table that is uh, has been developed by uh, Gibbons and Whitley, and it was based on Epler and Ozon's um, classification of standard complementation patterns in English. So let's have a look at the first one, where we can see the pattern of subject and verb. So this kind of a pattern is called intransitive. Intransitive, yeah, intransitive. So it is classified into that kind of a, um, they are called intransitive, trans transitive, distransitive, complex, transitive, co copulative, according to the type of the verb. So we are going to look at it closer here. So we can see that the example, in the example, Sarah concentrated, the verb concentrated is put in past tense, yeah? It is intransitive. It means that it does not require any other closal elements to be complete, to be co grammatically complete. So the, mm, the in in that very sentence, Sarah concentrated. So it's not the the actually the verb. It's is not requiring another words to be added to that sentence. It shows that by using that very verb, the sentence itself is already complete. So Sarah concentrated. It carries one whole meaning for us. So that is the reason it is called intransitive. Yeah. Okay. Let's have a look at the other, let's say, construction, intransitive construction. For instance, the wind blew or the door opened, yeah. The the woman talked, or the, the woman spoke, yeah. These are the examples that are can be considered as intransitive. Okay, what about transitive ones? So transitive constructions, they are on the other hand, they require a complement in the form of a object of a direct object. So what is DO stand for? It stands for the direct object. So let's have a look at that very example. Sarah enjoyed the book. So Sarah is the subject, enjoyed is the verb, and the book is the direct object. So actually it shows um, the, the verb enjoyed is the transitive because it requires a the direct object after itself, as you may see, yeah, here. So, and the, the most important thing that I would like to highlight is that direct objects usually take the form of a noun phrase. So, as you may see here, we have the word, the book, yeah, that is the noun phrase. 
So why the, the phrase, the book is considered as the phrase, not as the single word? That is what I would like to ask you guys. Why McIntyre, sorry, um, Gibbons and Wittele considers it as the phrase, not as the single word here? The phrase, the book. Because it has some kind of, let's say, the relationship with the subject. Okay, so um, that's not really about it, but thank you very much. And Aijan gave a correct answer. She did, uh, she mentioned the determiner. Yeah, well done. So actually, the determiner in the form of a um, definite article that is provided here, the book. So this is the reason it is it is considered as the phrase. Yeah. As we, as I have mentioned in the very beginning, the words they are coming together, they are gathering together, let's say, in order to build phrases. So if there are more than two words and they have one single semantics, it means that it is a phrase. Yeah. Okie dokie. Let's have a look at the next D transitive one. So what is a detransitive one? So if we have a look at the prefix D, D yeah, actually instruction require two objects in detransitive uh, complementation pattern. So if we <clears throat> uh, if we have a look at the uh, at the let's say formula, we see uh, the abbreviation for IO, so what is IO? It is the indirect object. So if we have a look at the example, Sarah gave Ellison the book. Ellison is the typical indirect object here. So as the Ellison appears as the recipient of the action, so she is considered, the word Ellison, let's say, is considered as the indirect object because she's receiving the, um, so Alison, the word Alison is receiving, a uh, recipient, sorry, of the action that has been represented, uh, represented by the verb gave. This is detransitive because it has two um, objects here, indirect object and direct object. Okie dokie, let's have a look at the, <clears throat> um, let's have a look at this very example further. So if we have a look at the um, structure of direct object and indirect object, we can see that both of them are expressed as noun phrases. Yeah? However, I would like to mention that sometimes indirect objects, they are they can be embedded within a preposition of phrases. So uh, when they are embedded in that very sense, they may alter the order of closal elements. For instance, uh, we can rewrite that very uh, sentence, Sarah gave Alison the book, into Sarah gave the book to Alison. So that is very interesting thing. When we are um, making some kind of a, some kind of a structural changes or orderal changes into to the when we are applying orderal changes to the sentences, we can use the prepositions, yeah, and it appears that the prepositions change the order of the sentence or of the um, of the phrases in the sentences. So sometimes indirect object may go to the end, as in the sentence, Sarah gave the book to Alison. So it is still, can be, uh, can be considered as detransitive because we have two objects in the sentence. Okay, what about the complex transitive verb? So actually complex transitive verb also requires uh, two elements in the sentence or in the clause. Uh, 
the first thing that I would like to say is that direct object, um, the direct object and the object complement that is uh, being highlighted as OC, they are they are being a part of the complex transitive verb here. So as you may see, apart from subject plus verb, we are using direct object and object complement. So what is the object complement here? If we have a look at the example, Alison thought the book boring. So the word boring, it is describing Alison's feelings about the direct object or about the book yeah, itself. So here, uh, the word boring is being as an object complement phrase because it's complementing the feelings of Alison regarding the book, regarding the direct object. This is about it. Okay. Mm, let's have a look at the final verb type. Type it is compulative construction. So actually, this uh, pattern is reliant upon the compula, compula to be, yeah. And it is um, its uh, related forms as is and are or was. We we use them as the main verb rather than auxiliaries usually. So here, yeah, am, is, are, yeah, and was, were, or as an example is here, is not considered as the auxiliary verb, but is considered as the main verb. So this is about the compula. So that is the reason we call it compulative. Okay, uh, however, sometimes um, we may also um, consider the, the verb, the usage of verbs of, of become, seem, and appear as the compulative structure also for some reasons. So, uh, actually, compulative construction themselves, they offer more information about the gram grammatical subjects. And because of that, the close elements that they insist upon is considered as a subject complement. Yeah, for instance, um, Alison is bored. So, um, bored here attributes to the property of the subject Alison. So, bored is not about the book now. Bored is about Alison about the subject here. So it is the essence of compulative one. When the um, subject complement, we have the subject complement that ha and uh, the verb itself, it can be an auxiliary verb, is considered as the main verb and it's helping the subject, subject complement to, let's say, to attribute the properties of the main subject. But this is about it. So you may remember that compulative is quite often is about the usage of auxiliary verbs that appears that appear as the main verbs. Okay, now we are going to have a look at the essence of coordination. So what is the coordination? Actually, coordination it is kind of a process. Yeah kind of process which link clauses together. So also we, we will talk about the subordination as well. And subordination is also a process which link clauses together. Yeah, but different types of the clauses. And uh, if the subordination about joining independent clauses with dependent clauses, so the coordination is about joining independent clauses, independent phrases only. So coordination is about two independent clauses or independent phrases also only. Let's have a look at the examples. So we have in A and B, we have two sentences, two independent sentences, two fulfilled complete sentences. 
Sarah enjoyed the book or Alison was bored. But if we have a look at um, C, the example C, we can see that uh, sentences, independent clauses A and B were joined together in order to accomplish the process of coordination. Yeah? Sarah enjoyed the book, but Alison was bored. And here, um, the conjunction but is coordinating them. So the usage of any kind of conjunctions, they are um, helping the independent clauses or independent phrases to be joined together. Yeah. So very interesting thing I would that I would like to say that usually with the conjunctions that we use every day, like and or so yet or they are typical uh, identifiers of coordination. They are markers of coordination. So when you see uh, these uh, these conjunctions, yeah, any kind of conjunctions, it says uh, a lot about the sentence itself. It says that the sentence used the process of coordination in order to be joined together. So, <clears throat> And um, now let's have a look at the types of coordination. So we have several types of coordinations. And when the co uh, the sentences um, join together through the usage of lexical markers as conjunctions, we call this type of coordination as synthetic. Yeah? But when we when the coordination occurs without any kind of uh, lexical markers, but it uses some kind of means as punctuation, like commas or I don't know, ellis ellipses. We call them asyndetic coordination. So let's have a look at the example here. Example is taken from the uh, young adult fiction that is called We Were Liars by Emily Lockhart, that was published in 2014. And this is the opening line to the young adult fiction. So please could, let's say, could I shall not read it for us. Hello, I shall not, can you read it for us? Yeah. Hello, we cannot hear you, unfortunately. I should read this. Okay, seems like I should not internet is quite poor. Or she doesn't want to speak. Okay, um, what about Dana Testinirla, please, can you? Uh, welcome to the beautiful Sinclair family. Mm. Yep. Can you please read the who opening line? Uh, no one is cr a criminal, no one is an addict, no one is a thriller. Uh, his sinkers are athletic, tall and handsome, we are old money democrats. Our smiles are wide, our chins square, and our tennis service aggressive. Okay, thank you very much, Dana. So, as you may see, sorry, I forgot the T here when copying. <laughs> Right, as you may see here, actually, um, the fiction starts with the greeting itself, yeah? And all those, um, the greeting itself is followed by a series of compulative constructions here. No one is a criminal, no one is an addict, no one is a failure. So, um, here, uh, the, um, let's call them, uh, subject, oh God, I forgot the, uh, the word. Okay, subject complements here as failure, addict, criminal, they are adjectives themselves, yeah? 
they are complement, complementing the subject, no one. So no one here is the subject and auxiliary verbs is, is, is appears as the main verb here because the main verb actually helps um, the complementary subject complement, complement to define uh, the uh, subject, the main subject themselves. So this is the, the example for the, um, for, for the compulative constructions here. So actually they are all kind of a simple sentences if we have a look at it. That is a very interesting. And the, the casts no on as the subject is used in order to negate the subject complements. And if we have a look at them, all the subject complements here are considered as undesirable attributes. So criminal, addict, failure, they're all some kind of a negative ones, right? And no one is used in order to negate them, in order to show that those negative undesirable attributes are they are lack of those uh, negative attributes so it means that the members of sinclair family they are like model citizens that they are some kind of successful individuals that they are such a lucky people etc etc very interesting that look how lockhart used um, um compulative constructions, compulative sentences, and compulative, let's say, simple sentences to tell us about the Sinclair family here. Well, let's have a look at the coordination here. What is about coordination? Well, we now know that they, uh, this, uh, the family of Sinclair, they are wonderful people, yeah? They are very role model people. And if we have a look at the following sentences, the Sinclairs are athletic, tall, handsome, and blah, blah, blah. We can see both ascendetic and syndetic coordinations in use. So here, athletic, after the words athletic and tall, we can see the punctuation. So when we use punctuation, we know it is an authentic coordination. And also the conjunction in a form of end is all, all used as well. So this is the syndetic coordination. Yeah. This is the example. So you can know what is syndetic and ascendetic. When the conjunctions are used, it is the syndetic. When the punctuation is used, it is ascendetic. So um, the same actually um, about the next one, yeah? Our smiles are wide, our chin square, and our tennis service serves aggressive. So it is also about the synthetic and ascent combination of ascendetic and synthetic strategies. Yeah, we see uh, the commas after wide, after square, yeah? This is the ascendetic construction and usage of conjunction here is also this uh, is, is a synthetic one, is a synthetic strategy. Okie dokie. <clears throat> and I would like to conclude that the usage of conjunction and and use of commas, they coordinate the subject complements in the form of adjectives here. We can see the quite several adjectives here, yeah, as wide, square, aggressive, and they are being uh, coordinated in um, in the subject. In the, uh, they coordinate. Uh, they are being uh, coordinated to the subject complements with the help of these conjunction and commas. That is very interesting thing. I found out from the examples for you. Okay, let's have a look at the next one. So we also have a polysynthetic coordination. It is the third form of coordination. And 
Polysynthetic coordination involves the significant repetition of the conjunction. Usually it is the conjunction end. Yeah? So when the conjunction end is being repeated over and over again, it is believed that it helps to coordinate elements of the phrase or elements of the clause or elements of the sentence itself. Let's have a look at the example by Cormac McCartney in his fictional uh, masterpiece, The Road, published in 2006. If anyone from the... Hey, I... Okay. Okay, Kaisar, would you please read it for us? By the way, welcome, Kaisar. Haven't seen you for ages. Kaisar Banura, please, could you read it? Seems like Kaisar is not following the lecture. Okay, what about Laura Korkanbaeva? Teacher, could you repeat what is polysynthetic coordination? Mm -hmm. So polysynthetic coordination is when the conjunction, yeah, especially conjunction A, is being repeated over and over again. So it is the repetition, significant repetition of a conjunction. Mm -hmm. So it seems like Laura corbin is also not following the lecture. That is very sad and disappointing. Okay, Arojan Sirak, would you please read it for us? Yes, uh, he pulled the blue plastic truck off him and uh, folded it, carried it out to the grocery cart and uh, packed uh, it and came back with their plates and some uh, cornmeal cakes in plastic bag and a plastic bottle of uh, surf. Thank you, Arujan. So, guys, um, what kind of conjunction is being repeated over over again? And, 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 and. Okay. So, as you can see, McCartney repeats this very conjunction, and this conjunction is coordinating all the words, all the phrases, and making some kind of a connection between the semantics yeah in the semantics of the sentence so can you please tell me how many times uh, the word n being repeated here three three are you sure can you please be six 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 times yeah Absolutely, six times. Thank you very much, everyone. So, um, when actually, when the when the conjunctions are being repeated over and over again, the subject is being missed. And we have here um, the subject being mentioned only once. Uh, in the very beginning, he. He pulled the blue plastic tarp off of him and folded it and carried it out and blah 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 and unfortunately he is used only once that is quite unusual to be honest for english language because usually english people like to highlight if they need to um, make a focus on the subject here but um, that is the style of mccarthy he is not using the uh, repetition of the subject for some reason. However, the, um, we can say that the hidden subject in that very long sentence is identical to the first pronoun subject he, and because of the uh, mentioning the subject in the very beginning, um, McCarthy deleted all uh, the repetition of the he through the process of ellipsis, yeah? So he just, the McCarthy avoided repetition in that very sense. And the conjunction end helped him 
to avoid that very repetition of the subject over and over again. Okay. Let's have a look at the five um, five clauses. Yeah. Who can read those five clauses? Let us say. Okay, Sambat, let's not go. Could you please read it for us? Yes, teacher. He pulled the blue plastic tarp off of him. He folded it sixty literature as language. He carried it out to the grocery cart. He picked it. He came back with their plates and some cornmeal cakes in a plastic bag and a plastic bottle of syrup. Thank you very much. So as you may see, there are uh, given five clauses yeah? and the lexical verbs as pulled, um, folded, carried, packed, came back, uh, they are highlighting that there should be a subject. But uh, for some reason, in order, sorry, in order to avoid the repetition, as we have mentioned before, uh, the author, McCarthy, omitted them, yeah, omitted the repetition of the word he, he, he over and over again. And in the very interesting thing that there are also two instances of the conjunction end in the final clause, like he came back with their plates and some cornmeal cakes in a plastic bar and a plastic bottle of syrup, syrup or syrup, I forgot. Actually, here the noun phrases themselves, they are embedded in that very un uh, adjunct prepositional phrase that begins with the with their plates, yeah? And so it says that, um, in, in that very, actually, extract, this very polysynthetic coordination is not necessary, to be honest, but it is kind of a, stylistic choice that author has made, that McCarthy has made. So he wanted to make the effect on the reader. So the effect in his instance is to make the emphasis on the boring, mundane life of the character. And he wanted to show that he was um, making that very, making the mundane actions over and over again, yeah? Folded, carried, packed, and the conjunction N is helping us, yeah, the polysyndetic, polysyndetic structure is helping us to highlight it, to show the reader, um, to, to, to show the reader through the emotional experience uh, that the life of the main, the lead character in that very uh, post-apocalyptic world is quite, is quite usual, is quite boring. Yeah? Nothing special happens in his life. This is about it. Okay, guys, um, now we are going to have a 10-minute break. And after the 10-minute break, we will come back to the topic of coordination. Yeah, And we will discuss the subordination as well. Okay, see you in 10 minutes.
Okay, welcome back. So, so about the coordination. So coordination, um, as we have previously mentioned, is about the um, gathering together or making two closest uh, joint, yeah, two independent closest joints. So when actually coordination works to coordinate independent closest sentences, they cannot be called simple sentences. They are not be considered as the simple sentences in syntactic terms. So uh, when the coordination works, we consider the sentences as compound sentences. Compound sentences are the sentences we know as um, in Russian or, or if I'm not mistaken, in Kazakh it is called, um, I forgot, I forgot to be honest, how it is called in Kazakh. Pardon? Okay, thank you, Laura. Yeah, Okay, okay, so this is about the coordination. What about the subordination? So subordination itself involves the combination of one independent clause or several independent clauses with the uh, one or more dependent clauses. Yeah? So uh, I don't I don't remember the terms in Kazakh in Russian to be honest. So this is about the independent clauses with uh, dependent clauses, yeah. And usually subordination, the um, the product of, co of subordination, they are called complex sentences. Okay, let's have a look at the uh, sentences, the examples in the sentences. In D, also, Sarah enjoyed the book, Alison was bored. So what is so interesting about it? So like in compound sentences, the, the complex sentence here, the complex sentence D, will contain two clauses, yeah? However, in this example, they, the both clauses, they have own subject and verb element, but yeah, what kind of, however we have here, why it is considered complex, not compound one? Well, because the first clue here, um, has uh, actually contain subordinating conjunction as also. Yeah? So that very also makes the first close dependent, let's say. Yeah? Uh, they introduce dependent or subordination here. Because itself, the close although Sarah enjoyed the book, cannot be independent itself. It cannot stand alone. Whereas the second clause, Alison was bored, is considered as independent because it can stand alone. It can carry the whole complete meaning when standing alone. While uh, with the although Sarah enjoyed the book, it will not work. Or with the second example, because big things are cool also, it will not work. So the two sentences, the two clauses, also Sarah enjoyed the book and because big things are cool, they are considered as dependent one. And the Alison was bored and students like big words. These are two clauses that are considered as independent clauses. Yeah. Let's have a look at the example again. Yeah, all right, so I actually have already told you about it. So, um, in, instead of saying dependent or uh, or independent close over and over again, you also can use the terms as, as subordinate and the main close. So Alison was bored, he is the main close, and Sarah, although Sarah enjoyed the book, is the subordinate close. So that, um, Зависимый и независимый, я не знаю, как на русском будет, да? Я уже забыла. Если казахша совершенно керек, салалас, сабахтас, я уже забыла, хрумалас, когда я кинзер, не смирок, совершенно примерно, может, вы помните, да, как что? Окей, okay, окей. Okay. <coughs> so, 
uh, we first of all in the very previous one yeah, talked about the identification of the sentences that we identify the clauses the, the sentences looking at the verb and when we identify the complex sentences the same thing the same uh, let's say principle works well as well so when we are finding out trying to find out or trying to identify a complex sentence we can have a look at the verb form so we have <clears throat> three um, let's say three types three methods of identifying um, sentences actually sometimes subordinate clauses they often contain non-finitive verbs yeah, according to Epler and Azon and uh, Epler and Azon they identified three varieties of the verb form so first of all it is when uh, we have infinitial form or base form yeah, when we use to yeah or we do not use to sometimes for instance I ask him to leave or I made him leave here it is some kind of a base form the second for the second um, way the second let's say type of the verb form is the ed form when we use participle second participle for instance intimidated by Pauline he left so here we see that intimidated is um, let's say is being is being used in order to highlight the complexity of the sentence or let's have a look at the third um, third, third type of the verb form is ing form or as we call it gerund leaving the party made him sad so actually um, subordinate clauses they can omit the verb for instance, if we have a look at the second uh, example, yeah, intimidated by Pauline, he left. But we can say Pauline left after Jack. Yeah. So uh, here, ellipsis takes the place in the second instance, but uh, the conjunction after brings the clause to our attention, like after Jack. Yeah. So it is. Mm. It is quite an interesting observation here that uh, that sometimes we can um, we can tell about things we can talk about things without using the verbs sometimes or for instance uh, let's have a look at that very interesting one um, only a child eight year old Einstein was very clever so here only a child what do you understand by the dependent clause only a child what does it mean here what kind of verb was omitted in your opinion only a child eight year old einstein was very clever you can find you cannot find it on the on 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 the PPT, I'm just telling it to you all. He was an only child. In his family. Mm, absolutely, yeah. Being an being an only child in the family, yeah. Eight year old Einstein was very clever. We can say in that very sense. So, actually, here the subordinate clause only a child. It is, um, it it has no verb itself, yeah, but it is saying as an like let's say as an attribute of einstein this very subordinate clause acts like a subject complement uh, it is complementing to the einstein and we can think that um, we can think of it as a missing and a compulative word so we can say although he was only a child uh, uh, Einstein, the eight-year-old Einstein, was very clever. So, 
in that very sense. So quite interesting. Uh, sometimes we do not need to use very, very long uh, sentences, very, very long clauses in order to um, tell about some kind of interesting things, tell about the interesting um, information to, to other, to not to, not to not to receive but to send the interesting information to the readers or to the listeners. All right, second um, example. Leaving the party made him sad. So here, living is the subject, made is the verb element, him is the object, sad is the object complement. Very interesting thing that sometimes, not sometimes, quite off, often actually, subordinate clauses, they act as the constituent element of the main clause. So it means that they can act as the sentence elements subject as objects as subject complements as adjuncts and etc etc so this is the example that is telling about it like um here is the maid is the verb element yeah and him is the object sad is the object complement and why it is object complement because it gives us more information about him yeah it's about it. So subordinate uh, clauses means that also act as a phrasal elements. So they can be the clauses yet have the function of the phrasal elements. So let's have a look at the relative clause because the previous information about the subordinate uh, clauses being having the function of the of of the sorry, of the god 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 phrasal elements yeah it has some kind of a connection to the relative clause when um subordinate clauses they make the function of the phrasal element elements it can be found as the relative clause. So for example, here, Alison was bored by the book that Sarah read. Yeah. So that Sarah, actually that is omitted, but we know that that should be there. Just the author probably omitted it for some reason or the man who mugged John was dangerous. Yeah. So here, the man who as a relative clause is um is acting as a phrasal element it is making a function of providing some in extra information about the um, about the man about the subject itself yeah? or about the object depending on the context uh, <clears throat> and about the omission of the relative pronouns it is actually a wide widely used practice when relative pronoun is being omitted yeah as in the ex example f alison was bored by the book sarah read so do not be anyhow do not uh, consider it as a deviation because it ha it happens it is a normal practice in the in english so this is it Okay, guys, uh, now I would like us to have a look at the um, topic of poetic syntax. So when, um, when, we are, when we are looking at the poems mainly, some poems um, in their lines, they have, let's say, completed semantics, completed structure, syntactical structure in every line. But sometimes author is uh, continuing uh, the thought in or continuing the thought that was representative in line one uh, in the line two in line three and line four sometimes it means that when the author starts to develop one thought the it, it can be syntactically it cannot be it cannot always be syntactically completed in one line only 
So the author may use several lines in order to send some kind of information through the, through the poetic language to the readers. So what it means, so when, when we have different types of the uh, poetic syntactical structure in the, um, in, in, in the poems, let's say, in the poetry. So we have a term as the end stopped line. So what it means, end stopped line, it is when a sentence or a phrase is completed at the end of the line, of a poetic line. Or uh, when the poet is ending the line at a grammatical boundary. And it is usually indicated by the punctuation. But we have the vice versa thing that is called enjambment. Yeah. It is the contrast to the uh, to the previous term, to the end stopped line. Enjambment, it is when the line, the semantical, the syntactical, uh, syntactical, let's say meaning of the uh, of the poetry continues throughout the several lines. When the run-on lines continue the syntactic structure from one line onto the next, to the second line, yeah, the second to the third, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, that is being followed over and over again. So it is called enjambment. In one word, let me put it in Kazakh, um sanda aqan bir bir söylemde bir lineimiz iki uç lineğa sözğanda ol enjambe. Al bir söylemde bıraq lineğa jalıp tıstasa, bıraq lineğa bitirse ol bizde boladı end stopped line. That is the difference, main difference about them. Okay, also we have a double syntax. So actually double syntax is when sentences, they are enjambed, yeah, and readers may find it quite difficult to construe the syntactic use of a word at the line end. Okay, let's have a look at the example and you will actually understand it. So we have the example here. It is the mm, it is the poem by Mattia Harvey, and it was published in, uh, in 2000. Uh, and it is called, the poem called in, is called In Defense of Our Un Overgrown Garden. So if you have a look at the line one, yeah, last night the apple tree shook and gave each lettuce, let us see a heart. We can see that this very line is end stopped. We do see that both semantically and syntactically the line is uh, close, let's say, that the line is not, the sentence is not requiring uh, some kind of a continuation. And in line two, it offers, yeah, uh, line two offers the explanation to the metaphor that has been used in the previous uh, line. The six hard red apples broke through the greenhouse glass and landed in the middle of those ever so slightly green leaves. So as you may see, we have in the uh, end of the line two, we have a conjunction end. And the conjunction end tells us that the sentence, uh, whether it is a complex or compound sentence, hasn't been ended yet. So this is enjambment. Yeah. Hope you got it. And if we have a look at the uh, line three, so line three is actually appears to be end stopped here, landed in the middle of those ever slightly green leaves. However, uh, the um, end stop, but the next line, next line, line four, yeah, it continues the sentence with the post modification to the noun with a relative close of that. So 
if you look at the line three, it seems like it has been ended. But however, line four is continuing the sentence by using uh, the relative clause that, as you may see. And a very interesting thing that you will see the double syntax uh, in the transition from line four to line five. That seem no mix of seeds and soil, but pastel and light and chalk, X marks, or our oaks that are supposed to be cut down. So it seems like as if um, when you will be reading the poem yourselves, you may find out that it seems like for line four and five, they are enjumbed. But if you read it, quite carefully, you will find out that line five itself has a, is quite independent itself. So it can, it, it is a kind of a tricky thing in double syntax. So it's called double syntax because if you read the line five independently, just as chalk X marks, mark our oaks that are supposed to be cut, it seems like it's a one independent and uh, ended line. However, if you read it with uh, in cope with line four and line uh, line four together with line four, you will find out that it has direct um, direct. It is a direct continuation of the line four. So the third pin bis the brigioch sans dar sdir olar brikin kuris sdir bir nersi bir suylemikin kuris sdir. Prakta bis the muizin raozoch sans dar. Сергей uh, покажется, что оно kind of an independent sentence here. It's presented as an independent sentence. Yeah. So this is about the double syntax here. So, okay, guys. Actually, this is it, what I wanted to talk about for today. I haven't done it too difficult for you to, I, I hope I haven't done it too difficult. I hope I could explain you, um, ex explain you quiet in an expanded way. So now, if you have any questions, you are free to ask, you are welcome to ask me to clarify your misunderstandings. Any questions? That was clear. Okay, thank you, Miruet. Thank you. Everything yeah. is clear, but I have uh, one little question. So, coordination mm -hmm. is subordination uh, are the same things, yeah? Just like synonyms? Uh, no, coordination is about um, joining two independent clauses, but mm -hmm. subordination is about joining independent clauses with dependent clauses. Ah, subordination. Ah, uh, to form complex sentences, yeah? Yep, to form uh, coordination sentences. to make compound sentences. Compound sentences. Ah, yeah. uh, yes. Okay, clear. Thank you. I think it's about something like sabaktas and kormalas, mm -hmm. but I do not differentiate sabaktas and kormalas because I forgot the program for Kazakh language. So you can have a look at it once more. In, in Russian, it's means сложно подчиненные и сложно сочиненные, right? I think so. Yeah, I think so as well. Yeah, thank you, Rosalda. To be honest, I don't remember Russian either. <laughs> Unfortunately, I forgot it. Okay, guys, any other questions? What we will discuss this um, uh, this week uh, in on seminar? <clears throat> at the seminar classes? Yes. Uh, at the seminar classes, we will be working with the poetry piece of poetry and a piece of fiction and uh, I actually will bring it to the class so now do not uh, do not worry about it actually I uh, last week I thought that I will post it on the uh, on the Moodle but I have changed my mind and I thought that it would be better if we make it there at the class so I just want you I, I just want to motivate you to be ready with the um, with with the lecture itself, with the knowledge from the lecture, because last time when I asked to 
bring the poems, many students, not from your uh, group, but mm -hmm. from other groups, they ignored that very task and they haven't prepared anything. Mm -hmm. So we will be working and we will be discussing the example for the morphological analysis, stylistic analysis at the class. So do not worry about it. No need to prepare anything as home time. Please. Thank you, teacher. Okay. Right, guys. It was lovely to talk to you. Let me know if you have any questions, but before, and thank you very much, of course, to, to join the meeting for joining the meeting. If you have any other questions, you can have with the, at the books, especially the books of Gibbons and Jeffries. They have wonderful explanations. And yeah, thank you very much, Rosalda. Have a nice day as well. Those who are coming to the seminars today, I'll see you today. Yeah, have a lovely day. Take a good care of yourselves. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Goodbye, care. teacher. Bye.